we're good to go? Okay. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. I'm Pastor Rob Myalis, and welcome this day to worship. I welcome those who are worshiping inside the sanctuary, as well as those who are calling in, or as well as those who are watching on YouTube. And we trust and pray that this All Saints Sunday, that wherever we worship, we can be comforted knowing that we are joining with those who have gone before us in faith and singing the praise and proclaiming the word of God. So I invite you at this point to still your hearts and to take a deep breath and know that the presence of God is with you. Please rise as you are able. We worship in the name in which we baptize, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin. Receive your forgiveness and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us pause for reflection as we together confess our sin in the presence of God and the presence of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. 
For by grace you have been saved. It is not of your works, but out of the mercy of Jesus Christ, who was sent to die on the cross for your sins. And as he lives victorious from the grave, I declare to you that in his name your sins are forgiven. Amen and alleluia. Ye watchers and ye holy ones is the next hymn. also with you. instructing us in the ways of humility and justice. Continue to ease our burdens and lead us to serve alongside of him, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The first reading is from Genesis chapter 25, 
verses 7 through 10. This is the length of Abraham's life, 175 years. Abraham breathed his last and died in a good old age, an old man and full of years, and was gathered to his people. His sons, Isaac and Ishmael, buried him in the cave of Machpelah in the field of Ephron, son of Zohar the Hittite, east of Mamre, the field that Abraham purchased from the Hittites. There, Abraham was buried with his wife, Sarah. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will read the psalm responsively. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul makes its boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. O oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he answered me, and delivered me from all my fears. Look to him and be radiant, so your faces shall never be ashamed. This poor soul cried and was heard by the Lord and was saved from every trouble. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and delivers them. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are those who take refuge in him. O oh, fear the Lord, you his holy ones, for those who fear him have no want. The young lions suffer want and hunger, but those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. The second reading is from Revelation chapter 7, verses 9 through 17. After this, I looked, and there was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, robed in white, with palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God, who is seated on the throne, and to the Lamb. And all the angels stood around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures, and they fell on their faces before the throne and worshipped God, singing, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these robed in white, and where have they come from? I said to him, Sir, you are the one that knows. Then he said to me, These are they who have come out of the great ordeal. They have washed their robes and have made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason, they are before the throne of God and worship him day and night within his temple. And the one who is seated on their throne shall shelter them. They will hunger no more and thirst no more. The sun will not strike him nor any scorching heat. For the lamb at the center of the throne shall be their shepherd and he will guide them to the springs of the water of life, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. The word of the Lord. Hallelujah, Lord 
to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel for this All Saints Sunday comes from the Gospel of Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain. And after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let us pray. O Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. I invite you all to be seated. I'm going to try preaching from the altar area this week. This way I can see all of you who are over here. And so... For this All Saints Sunday, this All Saints Sunday that is two days before such a bitterly divided national election, on this All Saints Sunday, I want to share with you a story. And it's a story of two brothers. And one, it's, it's an old, old story. And one was named Laughter, and one was named Listen. And so there, there were these two brothers, laughter and listening. And you would think with names like this, they would have grown up together, but they were actually half brothers. And their mothers didn't get along at all, as is to be expected. I mean, this can happen in any kind of family, but there was this, this rift. And, and one day, laughter was listening, and listening was laughing. And this just couldn't be. And so the one mom drove the others out, not just of the family, but out of the community, out, away, away, far away. The years would go by, and these two boys grew up separately, became very different people, one a real mama's boy, the other truly a man of the game and of the hunt, kind of a wild man, really. So they were profoundly different. But then came the death of the father, and they both came back. And we don't know how much listening and laughing there was. I suspect there was some. But they both managed to put down their differences. And they buried their father together. This is the story of Isaac and Ishmael. And in some ways, it's just a story of two brothers who had to struggle to figure it out at the time of a funeral. And this would be a resonant story enough for most of us. But it's also a story of, of something bigger. For you see, from Isaac, Isaac is the spiritual ancestor of the Jews and in many ways even of Christians. Ishmael is the spiritual ancestor of the Arabs and the Muslims. And in this way, you have this beautiful scene in Scripture where these two people that have had so much division and animosity and fighting, and even this day still, almost millennia later, are still struggling we have this story of them coming together in grief, not to fight, but to grieve together and to bury their father. And I offer this story, this story of grief and community and reconciliation, perhaps, this All Saints Sunday, because many of us today come with grief. The church year after year pauses on this day to remember, and this is what the candles are lit on the altar for, those who have died in the last year. We also have celebrated those who have joined the church 
who are baptized. But again, this year principally, and, and this day we principally come to, to remember those who have died. And there have been many who have died this year. Our community was hit very early on by COVID, and so many people, especially in care communities, knew loved ones that died. But beyond this, I think there was a way in in which so many of us had funerals this year that weren't the way we wanted them. Funerals where not everybody could gather, where we had to do it months later. There couldn't be a lunch and so forth and so on. And so I think we all come to this day with with an incredible amount of of grief, grief we haven't been able to express. And I haven't even begun to consider all the other grief over all that is happening in our world and in our lives. So yes, this year we come, and we come with much grief to this All Saints Sunday. And so I wanted to offer you a story of people who are grieving to give you permission to grieve. Indeed, I believe as Christians we have a unique calling for we believe in the resurrection. We know that it is not goodbye, but until we meet each other again. And because we have that that promise, that, that scene from Revelation when faith will be sight, when heaven finally comes to earth and the great chorus is singing Jesus' praise, we can then acknowledge that even though we will see our loved ones again, we still miss them this day. Oh, yes, indeed. So I offer this story again because it's a story of grief. It is also a story of of people coming together. And Isaac and Ishmael, it's a beautiful passage. It says they buried their father together. I think we're all hungry this year for a sense of togetherness, especially after so many of us have had in this last year to walk the mourner's path alone. My hope is that through all the different ways that we're worshiping this day that we can have a sense that we're together in this. I, I also think that it would be good for us, incumbent on us actually, to take time today and put down our phones from the news feeds and turn off the cable news and, and, and say, I'm, I'm not going to live in the world of political ads today. But instead, I'm going to reach out to somebody. I'm going to reach out to somebody who, who I think is also grieving, and, and we're going to laugh together, and we're going to listen to one another. We're going to comfort each other, for, for this is the way that the God we have in Jesus Christ works. The Holy Spirit comes and enables us to, to comfort each other. And so let today be a day in the midst of all of that's going on in our crazy world, the day when we, we come together and we acknowledge that we are grieving, and we laugh, and we listen, and yes, maybe even cry together. But I've also chosen this story for today because Isaac and Ishmael had conflict. They had strife. They had family contention. They're of different tribes, literally. Their moms are from different tribes. They'll go on and their descendants will have all sorts of problems with each other. And so I I want to acknowledge that these are are two parties, two different tribes that are, are not together. They don't see eye to eye. They don't make the same lifestyle choices. And I think as we we come to this week, we were forced to acknowledge that that we feel that we're in a very, very divided time. What what examples do I need to give of this? I have a a friend who has some signs, political signs, outside of his house, and he told me that he's actually going to take them down on election day. And he said because he's worried that whatever happens in the election, that, that people might go after his house if they see a sign in front of it. That's America in 2020, and that ought to shake us to our core, that that's where we've gotten. That we have so sort of isolated ourselves in media and social media bubbles, we're not only convinced that we're entirely right, but that other people are wrong and evil and stupid. And so we, again, we've come to this scene here. And I worry that we're going to choose And indeed, we're already writing a bad story. And that's a story that's been written in many cultures and many times and places before. 
where a toxic combination of events and leadership and media and stories and old wounds and tribes and races and it all just explodes and once there was peace and now there is discord and I, and I have this haunting sense we all fear this might even happen to us. And I worry that again we keep writing a story page by page that, that leads to a bad place. And so I want to offer us a different story A story of two people who had every reason not to like each other, every reason now that their father was dead to go after each other, but instead they chose to connect in grief. They they chose to acknowledge each other's humanity and to bury the dead together. My hope, yes, my hope is is that we could find a way to, to realize on this day as we go and explore our own grief, to, to realize that the other people, the people that we, we feel are ruining the nation with how they're going to vote on Tuesday, that they too are grieving. And they too are humans. For again, once we get on this path, the story of us versus them, of other people becoming adjectives, this is the gateway to violence. Now there's another story Because you see, as Christians, we know how this story actually truly ends. We know, again, the the last chapters of this story. And this is what we see in the book of Revelation, where we, we see all the nations of the world. We see all the tribes, and we see them together, and they're praising the living Lord. And, and what this means then is, is that, yes, if all the tribes are there and all the peoples and all the tongues and all the languages, wh- what this means then is that the people who in this election will vote different than me, the people who voted last time differently, I'm going to one day, when faith is sight, I'm going to be singing Jesus' praise with them. So this doesn't mean I have to agree with them, but I should at least begin to practice peace and to seek to build a community with them. At least give them space. You see, there is no happy-go-lucky, of course, Isaac and Ishmael have adventures after this. No, but they find a way to live together. And that is one of my hopes. So I'm not asking this All Saints Sunday who you're voting for. But I will ask you what story you choose. What story do you choose to write? What story do we choose to write? A story where we continue down a path that leads to violence? Or will we choose another story? A story where we see in our neighbor, we see in our neighbor the tears that they're crying and know that the living God has also promised to wipe away their tears as well. Amen. saints who from their labors rest who thee by faith before the world confessed thy name O Jesus be forever blessed Yet all
Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and he is seated at the right hand of the Lord Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, Move the hearts of all who participate in upcoming elections. Give courage, generosity, and vision to candidates and voters alike. Guide elected officials to answer the call of those who cry out for fair and just policies. We uplift before you those who have the vocation of serving in government. May their work promote the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comforting God, we pray that you be with all of those who grieve this day. We especially pray that you be with the loved ones of the saints who have passed into your glory this year. We remember Glenn B. Mesterfer, Shirley Becker, David Bingaman, Sandra Dahey, Vivian Fonisnock, Suzanne Fry, Karen Kreck, Gary Long, Russell Schreiber, Patsy Schenberger, Catherine Treyer, Mary Joan Weaver, Bruce Hill, Jim Yone. Bob Pulver, and Mary Betty Weidman. We remember that your death and resurrection is for all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of living water, we remember that in our baptism is a proclamation that we are yours. We join in praise and thanksgiving of those who have joined us in baptism to become your disciples. Today, we give thanks for the discipleship of Giram and Ezreal Charles, Owen Gunzenhauser, Eloise Hill, Molly Orvik, Delaney Perkins, Kennedy Van Winkle, Harper Zelowitz, and Harrison Weitzel. May they forever remember that the water and the word that they have been marked with your holy name, God of mercy, hear our prayer. And now I invite you to pray as Jesus first taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Some announcements here. Well, today I think there are.
ways that you can worship at St. Paul. <laughs> so hopefully uh, one of those works for everybody. And it's also a day, though, in which I'm really going to invite constructive criticism <laughs> Uh, because, again, we're, we're trying a number of new things today, and we, we want to learn. We want to learn how to make this worshipful for, for as many people as possible. So uh, please continue to give us feedback on that. And thanks to all those who are helping uh, make this possible. Today we will be doing Holy Communion. And uh, I'm going to give a note on Holy Communion, but I just want to say to those that are watching or listening, if, if you would like Holy Communion... We can try to arrange to have a Eucharistic minister take you communion, or um, you can come at the end of the 1045 service, and we're actually going to be giving people communion who are in their cars at that time, and you could drive up and receive communion in your car at that time. Um, so again, for those that are here, we will be doing communion at the conclusion of the service, and um, after the video, I'll explain a few more things about that. In terms of what we uh, need from uh, the church, we are looking for one more Sunday school volunteer to teach the youngest children. Uh, again, we, we need one more uh, teacher for the youngest children. If that's something you're interested, please contact Deacon Emily. And I also thank everyone who wrote thank you notes to people on the staff or to other people in church. That was really uplifting. Thank you all who were able to feel comfortable giving a, a pledge card. If you haven't done that, you can still do so. But I do thank everyone for your continued commitment to the church uh, through this year in which there's been so many changes, for that allows us to continue in mission and in ministry. And at this point, I invite us all to rise. Let us pray. Blessed. Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. You have set before us these gifts of your good creation. Prepare us for your heavenly banquet. Nourish us with this rich food and drink. And send us forth to set tables in the midst of a suffering world. Through the bread of life, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Thankful hearts and voices raised Tell everyone what God has done Let everyone who seeks the Lord Rejoice and bear the name of Christ Send us with your promises And lead your people forth in joy With shouts of thanksgiving Alleluia, alleluia I, I could have just told you who I'm voting for and why you need to vote for that person. And then, you know, maybe half of you or so would have said, wow, that's a great pastor. And the other half would have been, I can't believe my pastor said that. But instead, I wanted to challenge all of us, challenge all of us in this time, of course, to go and vote. Policies matter. The character of leaders matter. So go vote on Tuesday. But as we move forward, those words of Jesus, blessed are the peacemakers, may need to be spoken anew among us. And we will need to choose what story we write. As for me and my house and for this church, I hope that we will choose the story of Isaac and Ishmael, of finding ways to acknowledge the humanity of other people, to grieve with them, and one day, yes, indeed, to continue to build this community. Until again, we know the end of the story the end of the story when faith is sight and we join with all the saints from all the tribes and all the tribulations and all the wars that humanity has suffered and we all finally see the peace of God and cry out, salvation belongs to our God. So until faith becomes sight, may the peace of God that passes all understanding guard your hearts and minds in Jesus Christ. Your feet have trod.
many months ago, we learned how to make the sign of the peace in American Sign Language, but as a refresher, you pat your hands together and you smooth it out. So at this time, perhaps to the person beside you, I invite you to make the sign of the peace, and the peace of Christ be with you always, and also with you. Go in peace, Christ is with you. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. 